Right, meal replace replacement shakes. People are still using them. In fact, there's like a bell curve. In the 80s, people were right into them and then they sort of faded away. And now they're huge. In the past year alone, one company in particular, Isogenics, has had a 500% growth in New Zealand. And it's setting off alarm bells with some dietitians. One of them is ABC director and dietitian Angela Beryl, who joins me now. Angela, good morning. Good morning, Paul. Bella just offered you a lolly, a sugar-coated lolly. You said, no, thank you. But would you sometimes say yes to that? Oh, look, sometimes, occasionally, like I might be impartial to having a lolly. Because it's okay to have one every now and then, isn't it? Exactly. I don't have an issue with having, you know, something like that as a treat every right. once in a while. Well, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. You're not evangelical about, you know, no. food. No. Um, all right. Talk to me, because I, I genuinely am surprised that people are using these replacement drinks. So essentially, what these companies say is, forget that meal and maybe these other two meals, and instead, stir this dust up in a glass and drink it, and you'll be fine. Exactly. And look, it really depends on which, I guess, meal replacement shakes that people are using as well, because there's quite a broad um, variance, I guess, in actually the nutritional quality and how well they've been formulated as well. So some can be actually very good and quite helpful in helping to kickstart weight loss. Others are potentially going to help you lose weight, but then they're not providing that ongoing support. And so the guts of these drinks, because some of them, like particularly for sports people, are designed to give you a huge amount of energy and, and the vitamins and nutrients that you need. They're not necessarily designed to help you lose weight but the really popular ones now are there encouraging you to use them on the basis that the payoff is you'll lose weight. Exactly. Like I think the key one that people are using at the moment, it's called Isogenics, and that's predominantly, I suppose, pitched at a weight loss or cleanse or detoxification market. There's actually no scientific evidence to support the cleansing or detoxification. No, that's essentially what our liver and our kidneys do. So how are they able to make the claims they do? Um, it's probably a little bit of an unregulated market, so mm. to speak. So it does pay to do your homework and not, I suppose, get sucked into listening to the claims and things that products are making. People, I mean, here's another Another interesting thing. I thought that the whole detox fad was over, but clearly it isn't, because um, no. it was a huge, you know, the whole lemon detox, and you went from one detox to another detox. Did any of those things work? Look, the reality is you are going to lose weight because they're heavily restricting mm. your ca- calorie intake, so that's not in dispute. But the thing is, they're not actually helping to detoxify or cleanse the body. There's mm. no evidence to support that. And if people aren't actually learning how to eat better or to implement lifestyle changes like exercise, then the weight's going to pile straight back on once they finish. Okay, and there's no. Li- there's no point losing weight if that's going to happen. And quite often you hear people say, well, I lost the weight, but then I put on that plus some afterwards. The real concern, though, I think for dietitians like yourself is that these may actually be bad for you potentially. Look, some of them can, especially if that you're not actually undertaking them with medical supervision. So if you've um, a pregnant, breastfeeding, children or people with chronic diseases or medical conditions, even the elderly, if you're going on to these supplements, then they can potentially be quite dangerous for your health. And we'd recommend that you'd only go on them under the supervision of a dietitian. So, which most people wouldn't do. No, exactly. Okay, so how do you know if you've got one of these things sitting in the cupboard, if you're on it, if you're replacing meals with this, how do you know whether it is actually okay for you or not? Look, it really comes down to doing your research and have a look and see if there's been any scientific studies using that product. See, but people don't do that either, do they? I know. It's let the buyer beware, really. And I think if you're going to be buying these sorts of things, choose to buy them through a reputable outlet. Like a pharmacy would probably be better than potentially buying something So is it reasonable to assume that if you're buying one of these from a pharmacy, one, the pharmacy's checked out that the product is okay, and two, they will be prepared to give you good advice? For the most part, although it really depends, I suppose, which pharmacies you're looking at as well. Um, it God, it's would, a nightmare out there, isn't it? It's it a really, sharp pool. It really is, and that's why we'd recommend that anyone that's looking to embark on using one of these weight loss products would do it in conjunction with visiting a dietitian. If, if you were making a blanket recommendation on this, would it be not to use these products? Look, I think they do have their place. They can help kickstart weight loss in some individuals, but I would recommend that if you are going to be using these products that you do it in conjunction with dietary and lifestyle yeah. advice. Seek advice and 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 make a good choice. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But as you say, buyer beware. Angela Beryl, thank you very much for joining Thanks. us.